Okay, part two of Ogre Next. Uh, so I was playing around a little bit more and looking at more of these samples, and some of these samples are just so cool, and I didn't really realize it at the time I was making the first one, how cool some of these demos were. Because I was basically looking at the tutorials, which are very basic little things, but some of these are super neat, and they really show you the potential of Ogre Next and what it has ready to go for anyone that needs a rendering system. This pretty much sells me on it. All right, so let me just uh, flip through some of these here gonna clack around on my keyboard um, and just look at some of these so for example look at this animation tag point and it basically tells you a little bit tells you about the animation system and it has a little fly system so you can look fly around most of these have fly controls in them uh, nothing super impressive here it's hard to see there okay there he goes I think he moved all right, and that's just one. Let's go to the next. This one has area approximate lights. It has some light planes and stuff going on here. And as you can see, you can toggle animation and the uh, no texture thing. Okay. And then there's custom render renderable. Let's check this one out. Not sure exactly what this is supposed to show off, but as you can see, the shadowing worked fine. Okay. Decals. Okay, so it has F3 to hide show animated objects. There's some objects. F4, show hide palette spheres. There we go. And we can toggle transparency mode. It's hard to see the difference on that. But as you can see, it's doing something with, I'm not sure I under, even understand what's going on here, but basically changing them based on their location and stuff. Dynamic geometry. Let's try that one out. Like the samples in here are just super cool. There's just so, so many. We got some changing... Geometry, forward 3D, whoa, okay, that's just my mouse wheel, I don't know what the heck mouse wheel is doing, but it's doing something crazy, uh, let's, okay, let's go back to normal, all right. So this is playing around with lights. We can increase or decrease the number of lights and their radius and change between clustered forward and forward 3D. Change the threshold. So all sorts of things you can play around with here. Wow. Sample HDR. Change the exposure. Uh, how do you change it back? Okay, well that's pretty cool effect capabilities there. Heavy overcast, moon night. Wow. There's another one, HDR SMAA. Change the time of day effect. A 
and plume threshold. Wow, I'm just blown away by the number of examples and cool little things that are in here. I'm not entirely sure what this one is. Just like lights up against a dark wall, I guess. Pretty cool. Import animations share skeleton instance. Let's see what this one looks like. Alrighty. Cool. Of course, source code is right there. Instant stereo. Now, I tried this one before and it kind of crashed my computer, so I'm not going to do the instant stereo. Here's instant radiosity. Let's give that one a look. And it looks like there's a bunch of different things we can change here. The bias, cluster size. It looks like it's shift to lower it. Non shift to, to tighten it. It doesn't really tell you that, but I kind of figured it out. Number of rays. Multiplier, threshold, power boost, X range. Oh yeah, I guess it does tell you that. Hold shift to change in the opposite direction. And you can change the light type with F3. Directional light, point lights, and spotlights. Load cube maps. Not entirely sure what I'm looking at here, to be honest. Just looks like more lights. Load cube maps manual probes. I love these reflections, they look super nice. <coughs> Excuse me, it's probably really loud. Adjust material roughness. Open the air a little bit and hold shift to move faster. Pretty cool. Morph animations. Let's check out that. Very cool. PBS materials. Get real close to one of these. Per pixel grid placement. Okay. Post processing. That actually gives us a little bit of a scene, which is kind of cool. Sky box and everything. And we can change some effects. Bloom. Radial blur. Glass, dither, old TV, styling, 
old movie. Motion blur. And you can combine them up too. To glass and bloom. So oh, this is one of the coolest ones I think to play around with. Check out refractions. Scene format. Apparently I'm saving scenes. Not sure I really understand. I think this is saving. I'm not really sure what it's doing, but it's doing something with the file there. Green space reflections. You can change the roughness. This one is destroying my frames. I mean, only 30 frames. Shadow map debugging. Try that one out. Change the filters. Hmm. Shadow map from code. Static shadow maps. Seems like the same code. Probably something different though. Stencil test. Okay. Stereo rendering. I'm gonna skip that one because I think it might crash my stuff. Tutorial distortion. All right. So now we're getting back into the tutorials. I don't know where like the walkthrough for these tutorials is. I couldn't find it, but there it is. Some distortion that looks cool. You can change the strength. Although my plus doesn't seem to work, so I can only turn it down. And we're getting into all the tutorials here. Which I think I showed a few of. There's terrain. I want to look at terrain. Very cool. We can lock the camera to the ground with F2. I notice they don't lock the camera, so you can do like 360s. <laughs> Should be an easy fix. I'm surprised I didn't fix that. And you can change the time of day. Uh, my plus key doesn't work. Just gonna run it again. Locked. 
to the ground. Go up on this hill. And change azimuth. Let's see, that doesn't seem to do anything. Pretty cool though. Okay, I'm gonna skip some of these tutorial ones. Maybe I'll look at look at a few of them. So if you're not already sold on Ogre, this might sell you on it. It seems super cool. Uh, the next thing I'm probably gonna do is try to implement it into my own project and use it for my own little game. Because I, I I can't imagine any of the other renders I was looking at being better than than Ogre and having more functionality. I already did that distortion one. There's multi-threading basics and multi-threading. Let's just look at look at that. Okay, so this is more about the code than it is what you're seeing on the screen, I think. And there's some VR stuff, which I don't think I'm going to... Well, I don't know if this is VR. Okay, this one's called Updating Decals and Aerial Lights. Let's check that out. Looks like we can just change all those. Check out the manual objects. Interesting. And mesh. I'll go to the top. Mesh. If this is okay, it's just this guy again. So a lot of samples here, a lot of cool little things. And also you can if you're wondering which ones you can run and you're not sure, well basically all the samples you can run, but you can always tell by going to the properties. And if it's an application, you can run it. If you go to the properties and it's a DLL or a utility or static live, you can't run it. It's to applications. I'm sure you already know that if you've gotten this far, but maybe you don't. Well, what else can I even show? I think that's it. All right, well, thought I'd just follow up and show you some of the cool samples that come with it in a video in case you couldn't get this far or needed motivation to keep going or something. There you go. All right, see you guys in the next video. Peace out.